Welcome to the second part of this lecture on feature interactions. In the first part, I wanted to motivate you why we want to think about feature interactions, what are the different kinds of feature interactions. And in the second part, we want to have a closer look how to handle feature interactions. And the basic assumption that we have is that we already identified which features are interacting with each other. And these can be can be one feature, uh, one feature uh, being interacting with the base implementation, but also a pairwise or threewise uh, or higher order interaction. Uh, for to for simplicity, we will look at pairwise interactions only in this part. But the strategies being discussed here, how to handle, how to implement feature interactions, are actually more general and could also be considered on examples that or for a feature interactions of a higher order, or even for some interactions of a feature with the base implementation. So the problem, what is the problem that we are focusing on? How to find a good strategy to handle the interaction and the strategy should not introduce the option of feature problem. As we have not discussed the option of feature problem, I want to uh, guide you into this topic <clears throat> by means of an uh, example. And thanks for Timo Kira for coming up with this uh, example. Um, we uh, uh, have used uh, a running example uh, already, the graph library, um, which is a common uh, benchmark for uh, product lines or benchmark problem. So we've used this already, but over here, we now have uh, a possible feature in the action that we can see. So we have a feature model uh, illustrating that graphs can have nodes that are colored or not colored, the edges, we have think two things we can choose, directed or weighted edges, uh, or uh, both not selected, and uh, we can have shortest paths uh, as one algorithm. We're only showing an excerpt, uh, a relevant excerpt of the uh, product line. And this is something obviously in real world programs, uh, it's much harder to identify and to see uh, those interactions. But uh, for this uh, product line, and we've looked at earlier at a particular code, uh, something like this could happen uh, or could be introduced easily into the source code. So what is the problem here? You could inspect the program on yourself and then try to find out what's the problem. Chances over now, you need to pause the video uh, if you want to continue thinking about this. If not, I will get, guide you through this. So what happens here is that we have an instance of the optional feature problem. What does it mean? The optional feature problem says that we can choose feature optionally from the domain perspective. So in the domain that we are referring to or where we that we are realizing by means of our implementation of our product line, um, we have certain combinations available and there are features that are optional. But whenever we choose them together, uh, we have some unwanted um, behavior that occurs. So basically, we have a feature basic graph. It has uh, edges and nodes. And we have a feature mo uh, module weighted. So we're referring to feature on the programming for this example. Then we have the, um, uh, the weight uh, double uh, as a double uh, defined as an additional attribute that we would add to the class edge over here. Uh, so for those not familiar with feature under programming, you might want to go back to the particular lecture where we explained it. And we have another feature module shortest pass, and this shortest pass is somehow uh, realized, and we are excluding some source code here, obviously, uh, but we have some edges, and we are comparing the weights of those edges, and depending on uh, like the length of uh, a certain edge, we would choose uh, a certain edge or would not choose a certain edge. So what happens here is that we have uh, a dependency. We introduce the dependency on implementation level, which is not reflected in the problem space. Right. So on the left hand side, we have the problem space, the feature model. On the right hand side, we have the solution space. And the solution space introduces a dependency. And the dependencies can be visualized. So we have, we are referring to this particular field over here in terms of these two statements um, that are accessing the variable weight. And if we would say we are excluding this feature 
but we are selecting the basic graph and we are selecting the feature module shortest path, then we would have a problem similar to the problem that we've seen uh, earlier with the preprocessor-based implementation of the graphs. So the question is, what makes a good strategy to implement the coordination code, to realize the feature in the action, to resolve the optional feature problem, uh, to kind of implement it in a way that is desired? And there are multiple properties that we uh, will uh, also use as a guidance to the next uh, to this uh, part of the lecture. And one is variability. We want to have a large amount of variability, if possible. So all the variability that is defined in problem space should be realized. So for every valid configuration, according to the feature model, according to the problem space, we can generate a product that implements this configuration. And we will see that some strategies to deal with this uh, will uh, not uh, focus on this property and others uh, will focus on this property. Then we have implementation effort. We should not require overwhelming implementation effort. Uh, it would not be attractive in practice if we have a lot of, introduce a lot of implementation effort. Then sometimes we are, uh, the most critical part would be binary size uh, of the program or the performance. So. We do not want to introduce the binary size or decrease the performance of our products compared to an individual implementation of each product. Right? So we could consider, like, compared to clone and own development, where we can optimize each product com uh, completely uh, within uh, certain details, we do not want to have a disadvantage when implementing this with a certain strategy when it comes to those feature interactions. And the fourth part is code quality. And of course, from like a software engineering point of view, uh, this is the most, uh, most important one. But of course, in practice, uh, we want to have uh, all of this together. So the code quality, uh, we should not reduce code quality, which would make the product line harder to maintain later on. So we do not want a hack that simply solves the problem, but we rather want to maintain a good level of code quality. So there are different strategies, and we will introduce those strategies. I will show you an example, and later on we will also see uh, uh, and compare those techniques with each other. In terms of always, can we uh, realize all the variability? What is the implementation effort? How, what about binary size and performance? So non-functional properties, and what about code quality? So the first strategy is that we adapt the feature model. So basically, we add uh, domain dependency or the depend dependency that arise from the implementation level, we add it to the feature model. So basically, this says that we cannot have all the possible variability anymore, but we forbid some of the combinations. We basically forbid the problematic configurations. But this is no problem for implementation effort, for binary size or performance or code quality, because the features the both features that are interacting with each other, in our case, weights and uh, shortest paths, they will be implemented without coordination code or without taking care of uh, the possible uh, combinations. So in our example, it could mean that we introduce a new uh, constraint. So this is a cross tree constraint saying that whenever we select shortest paths, we need weighted. Uh, remember, we have this dependency over here that we access the weight. So we simply make this explicit also in the problem space. So kind of what we do is we take a dependency from the solution space and we translate it into a dependency in the problem space. And basically, we forbid those combinations that are problematic uh, when generating those. So the more generous strategy behind this is not just adding a dependency, but adapting the feature model. So we can adapt the feature model such that we forbid the, the problematic combinations. And there's another uh, thing that could be interesting to just exclude certain feature combinations. So for instance, uh, we could say that certain variants are not possible. This is very similar again, that like variability uh, is not completely 
um, uh, yeah, uh, available. Uh, so the difference over here would be that we not say that um, the features uh, uh, or one feature needs the other one feature, but we could say that they cannot be chosen uh, at the same time. So what would happen here is those two features would become mutually exclusive and we could see what could happen over here. So we make them mutually exclusive in the problem space by basically saying that we cannot select both together at the same time, shortest pass and weighted. But of course, this only makes sense if we also in addition change the implementation over here. Uh, so the implementation in this example would be we have an implementation that is independent of the particular weights. So we have an implementation of shortest paths uh, which do not need to care about the weights because weights cannot be combined with shorted paths anyway. And uh, over here in this example, it could be like this. We assume that the weights of the edges are one and then we uh, collect and compare those edges, uh, those weights then, which in this case are only uh, assumed to be one because no weights are available for unweighted graphs. There's another strategy. We can try to focus on an orthogonal implementation, an implementation that has no dedicated coordination uh, code, uh, coordination of the interaction, uh, which has uh, a low implementation effort. It has a low uh, uh, high uh, code quality, um, but it's questionable when we talk about binary size and performance because not all the possible variability uh, is actually um, uh, is actually there. And it depends a bit on the case. If this is a feasible strategy, if it's okay to have no coordination code. So what does it mean when looking at our example? In our example, again, we say that uh, 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 those cannot be combined, but we simply, we, we do not take any weights at all into consideration, but we simply ignore the weights in this case. So that's very similar to, um, to the implementation, to the strategy that we've seen before, because in both cases, we do not allow the combination of both. But over here, we simply would even uh, ignore the particular weights. Um, so the calculation of the shortest pass ignores the weights, uh, but merely counts the number of edges on the pass. And of course, depending on the particular situation and depending on the use cases, this strategy might be feasible or not. And um, uh, for other examples, and it depends a bit on the examples whether this is a good strategy or not. There's another way how we can deal with this. This is the third strategy uh, referred to as uh, S3. It's to duplicate certain implementations. So we're duplicating certain uh, features in this case. Uh, so we have a duplication uh, in terms of this uh, yellow feature. And the yellow feature will be implemented twice, once with the coordination code and once not with the coordination code. And this means we basically have all the possible variability. Uh, we can focus on the, the best possible uh, binary size and performance because we have, we can, both of these replicates can be really optimized on this use case. But we have a higher implementation effort because we have to implement these uh, duplicated code and we have reduced code quality because when it comes to maintenance, we always have to see when changing one of the modules, we also need to change the other part, the other duplicate. So we can look what this means. <clears throat> and in our case, we basically implement two uh, ways for uh, the shortest pass. So we have two alternative implementations here and the one uh, weight is shortest pass is used whenever the feature weighted is selected and unweighted is shortest pass is selected when the feature is not there. And what we see now is on the right hand side are actually implementation that we've already seen. So we would ignore the weights if there are no weights at all, if it's an unweighted uh, inter, um, shortest pass. And if there are weights, then the weights are also available. We can access them and use them in the weighted version of shortest pass. But when it comes to feature under programming and feature modules, we would actually need to duplicate this feature module in order to make these two uh, specific um, implementations uh, available. 
the fourth strategy is to move the source code. So basically, this would mean that we have some coordination source code, but this source code is moved into one of the features. So all the coordination code will be in one of the features, um, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, having all the, the interacting part, uh, the two features are interacting on. The variability is possible. The implementation effort is OK. We do have a problem with binary size and performance because uh, the uh, configuration in which we uh, choose only one of the features, but the other one is included over here, is basically uh, giving us um, uh, yeah, a larger binary size, uh, reduced performance. And this also comes as a price of code quality. And the reason is that we are actually mixing these two features here together in one implementation unit. So the idea of feature on the programming, for instance, was that we split up our implementation into certain features and we would have some coordination code uh, within that feature module. So let's have a look what this means. For example, for our example, it means that we would say the basic graph already has the attribute weight. So the weight is not needed anymore over here. Um, in the weighted feature, and now we can access the weights, um, and the weights would be basically replaced by another uh, value in the feature module weighted. Um, uh, and this basically means that uh, when we are thinking about the, the graphic uh, that we've seen before, this is the feature that has that is actually uh, composed out of two things, and the red part of the feature is actually this uh, additional code and when it comes to code quality uh, and we want to identify everything that is uh, there with respect to the feature module weighted then we will not find all the source code in the feature module weighted but some of the code will be split into other features over here into the basic graph and you see while the initial um, interaction was between weighted and shortest pass over here, uh, we move some code from the feature weighted to basic graph. So it doesn't need to be always those two features, but we can also, the, um, the way how this is solved can actually be a bit more complicated in practice. Another way is to use conditional compilation. So basically, uh, uh, we could yeah, kind of cut on those borders uh, where, uh, where we have something uh, implemented. So we could say that this part of the source code is only available if both features are selected. So we can do this with preprocessors, with conditional compilation, with build systems uh, by means of com conditional compilations. Um, we have all the possible variability. Uh, the implementation effort in general is rather low be because we just need to um, yeah, to spot the uh, locating the source code, implementing this interaction, and annotating it with the particular interaction. Uh, we also have no problem with binary size and performance, and this is also um, an interesting recap. Uh, we talked about this already in the lecture on conditional compilation, the lecture six, uh, that conditional compilation is often used for embedded systems for systems with restricted hardware, um, for operating systems. And the reason is that conditional compilation is especially good when it comes to binary size and performance. However, we do have a problem with code quality here. And the problem is that these programs are hard to read with conditional compilation. Uh, we have a mixture of these two languages, of the language of the preprocessor, of the conditional compilation, and that host language. And we have all the disadvantages that come with conditional compilation and that have been discussed in lecture six. In our example, it could be that we could even combine uh, feature oriented programming with preprocessors. We could say that we have some preprocessing going on before we combine the feature modules. But of course, in this example, this would even make the process and the understanding much more complicated. And we would, again, not have everything uh, uh, yeah, uh, for the feature uh, module uh, or for the feature weighted together in one spot, there's some implementation that is spread over other modules. So feature traceability is not given. 
So, and uh, sometimes we already have seen this, uh, it's a bit dependent on the implementation technique uh, that we've decided to, uh, or that we have chosen for our product line, how to solve and uh, handle certain interactions. And uh, in this case, um, uh, we are talking about derivative modules. So this can be applied to implementation techniques that use modules anyway. So we talked about components, services, plugins, but also uh, on feature modules and aspects in the lecture. Um, and we've seen that strategy S5 was dedicated to conditional compilation. And for all the other strategies, we basically can say, we are introducing a new module and this module coordinates the code of those two features. So basically we have all the possible variability. We can, uh, yeah, in the solution space, realize all the variability that was promised in the problem space. Uh, we can have reduced binary size and performance because this additional module can be, uh, yeah, will only be included if uh, the other two modules are included. So will only be included over here and not uh, to the other uh, variants. Uh, and it's also fine when you think of uh, code quality because um, we can identify all the source code uh, assigned to a certain feature. Sometimes it's not sufficient uh, to look into just one feature module, but to also look into these additional derivative modules. But they are explicit and they are uh, really saying what are the features that are interacting here. So code quality is okay, but there's a high implementation effort because what would happen for if you have even higher order interactions, so three features would interact with each other, then we would already need four different uh, modules uh, as you can see from this picture over here. So when we think about these um, three features and all of these three features are interacting with each other, then we would have uh, already four derivatives modules that we would need to create uh, for this example. So this can mean a high implementation effort, especially for higher order interactions. So for example, how does it look like? Um, we again have like the shortest pass feature, but we have an additional weighted shortest pass feature, which brings the additional functionality in uh, that is needed whenever we select weighted and shortest pass. So this additional feature is introduced in our problem space uh, over here in our feature model. And the feature is only chosen if both of the features are selected. It would be sufficient to uh, to only have, uh, or it's not sufficient to have just the one direction that if both features are selected, this feature is there, because the feature can only be there if both are uh, selected. Also on the uh, on uh, the other hand, so if uh, you can think about this. Uh, a bit again, or you could follow me now with the implementation. So the way how this is solved is that uh, we introduce a method that uh, tells us which of the two edges is actually longer. And this, this is the one we would consider for the shortest pass algorithm. And um, this implementation is actually replaced by a new implementation. It's always returning false if there are no weights, because then it's independent which, uh, which uh, edge we would go. It's a bit more complicated, I know, from the for shortest pass algorithms. Um, but over here, um, we would have a new implementation then. And over here, we can use the weights because we know from the feature model that uh, the whenever the feature module weighted shortest pass is there, then also weights are available. And there's no reference in the feature shortest pass itself. So we looked at different strategies in this part of the lecture. Uh, we looked at different solutions to handle the variability. We looked at the adaptation of the feature model, orthogonal implementation, duplicate implementations to move the source code into another feature, conditional compilation uh, when it comes to preprocessors or build systems, or derivative modules whenever we have um, uh, yeah, implemented the thing with modules. 
And now we can look at all the um, yeah all the properties that we mentioned uh, earlier, and we will see that there are four techniques that uh, can uh, that are good at uh, maintaining the variability. There are uh, four techniques that can uh, have a reduced uh, implementation effort, or the implementation effort is reasonable. Um, we do have four techniques uh, where uh, the binary size and performance is great, and we do have three techniques that uh, help to maintain a good source code quality, so meaning there's no duplication and all the source code of feature modules uh, or features is together. But as you can see from the table, there's not this one solution which basically fulfills all our needs. And that's why we are introducing all these different techniques, because in practice, you have to look at the particular situation. In some cases, it might be feasible to have to reduce the variability. Then you could think of adapting the feature model or providing an orthogonal implementation. In some cases, this is not feasible, and you have to go to one of the other techniques. But it's fine that, um, uh, and you don't want to suffer uh, from code quality, then you might uh, want to use derivative modules. But of course, if your product line is implemented with conditional compilation, then you would not change it because of just implementing this one uh, implementation. So if it's already in conditional compilation, you would just use preprocessors um, to uh, uh, yeah, implement this interaction. And then depending on like whether the implementation effort or binary size uh, uh, is interesting. Also, the other two strategies could be chosen in certain uh, particular situations. So what are the lessons learned? Uh, we've seen that we can adapt the, the feature model to avoid undesired interactions. We can basically uh, remove those uh, configurations that are problematic. But there are also strategies to implement coordination code uh, to somehow resolve those interactions in the solution space in, instead of uh, yeah, simply forbidding them in the problem space. And we discussed strengths and weaknesses of all those strategies in terms of those four properties. Uh, well, do we maintain the variability? Um, do we have a low implementation effort? What about the binary size and performance? And do we maintain feature traceability? Is the code quality uh, OK with the strategy or not? There's something further uh, to read over here. And you could think about all the strategies again. We've kind of, uh, we tried to see uh, and explain for this one single interaction, how would all those possible solutions look like? What is the strategies uh, that you would uh, use for the implementation and why? But you could also think of other possible interactions that could occur in a graph uh, product line with more features in there or even with the features that we discussed earlier. Nice uh, that you've been here. Uh, look, uh, take some time for doing the practice, and then we see each other again in the next part of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.